Welcome to the Purpose to Create podcast with Natasha Wright, a business podcast for photographers and creative preneurs who want to level up as they pursue their purpose to create. Lean in as we connect, inspire, and impact you as you build and grow your business. I'm so hyped that you're here and listening to today's show. Today's guest is Rita Oz, a copywriter who helps women develop their signature voice so they can sell more authentically and generate more revenue. In today's episode, we're chatting all about how to develop your signature voice so you can stop stealing from your face. Hey, Rita, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Hey, I'm super excited to have you here. Before we get into this juicy topic about developing your signature voice, can you share with us a little bit about you and how how did you get into being a copywriter? Sure. Okay, I'm going to make this real quick. I always wanted to be a writer. It's just my thing, right? So I went to school, University of Pittsburgh, for creative writing. I interned at American Eagle Outfitters in their marketing department, and I first really started to understand what copywriting was. They had, like, an ideal client. I completely forgot. I think her name was Katie, and I was just like, what in the world? Who is this Katie, girl? What are we doing, right? So I just really got immersed into marketing and copywriting. But, you know, I graduated during a recession, did not get a job offered. I just had to figure it out. So I went into technical writing for a while, basically most of my career. I uh, fell in love with a military guy, moved across the country, quit my job, and just had to figure out how to make money. So I started doing my wedding website. It was way cute. People started paying me to do their websites, and I fell into entrepreneurship that way. And I had no business doing web design, like no business at all. I mean, I was all right, but I probably shouldn't have been doing it. But I did so well because I could sell. I could write. My sales page copy was dope. Anytime I launched, it was dope. So I finally started to realize that, like, I need to go back to writing. Like, this is something yeah. I do, something I'm supposed to be doing. So I just pivoted. Now I'm a copywriter helping women like you, and I'm killing it, and I'm happy, and I love it. <laughs> oh, I'm excited, but it's, it's just like creatives to start off doing one thing because we kind of fell into it, but it actually pushes us into our purpose. So it's really exciting. I'm glad you shared that piece of your story because I really think it's really important because a lot of people feel that, you know, that story doesn't matter when they're really talking about their brand and as they build a lot of people shy away from telling their story, but it actually helps to connect the pieces about how you got here. So that was really, I like that. Thank you. No problem. Yes. Okay. So let's get into today's episode because I want to know what a signature voice is. How do you develop one and why do I need one? I did not understand why I needed a brand voice until I started to make a pivot in my business. So for the listeners out there who may not really understand what that means to develop a signature voice and why you need one. I think this is, um, that's a mouthful. Okay. So why is a signature voice important? Let's start there. A signature voice is important because it allows you to show up authentically and it allows you to intentionally connect with the people that you want to connect with. Right. Um, it's very similar to a logo when, you show up or when you when somebody's reading your copy, they can be like, oh, that's Rita all day. Or, you know, that's you all day, right? Okay. How do we develop one? It's really about understanding who you are as a person or as a brand, what you stand for. So you have to kind of develop core values. And from those core values, you figure out adjectives to describe your voice. And it's, let me tell you what mine are. So my, my brand voice is inclusive, it's transparent, it's direct and it's bold, right? So like that's, if you go on my website, you'll see that like I'm all about most communities. I try to include every single person into my community as far as being inclusive to LBGTQ communities, religious and non-religious communities, um, able body and non-able body community. Like I really try to make these spaces safe and like I'm gonna work with you. I'm gonna have some closed captions. Like I got you, right? I'm very transparent about who, what I do and who I do it for. And I may talk, touch on some topics that everybody may not dive into in their brand, but I use my platform for advocacy. So I'm going to speak on things that may be hard to say or hard to hear or my version of the truth, right? But some other brands are fun and they're flirty and they just about to just crack jokes. They just about to like, they're not going to go into that, but that's okay too, right? So you have to know how you want to show up in the world and do it consistently. 
And before you get your logo, before you get your brand colors, before you get all of that stuff, you have to have a voice because visuals only capture the words that you're trying to portray. Does that make sense? Right. No, that makes a lot of sense. That makes okay. Sense. okay. No, that's clear. And I even think about, you know, when you were helping me to develop what my signature voice is for my brand, it's not easy. It's a lot of work, it's right? Cool. Like you can't just say, I want to develop my voice. Rita, can you just write something for me? It don't oh, work like no. that. Oh, no. I mean, the, 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 pro the estimation process of figuring out who you are is like a two hour plus process, right? We need to, I want to know like what you stand for, what hill you're going to die on. Um, and what parts you want to bring into your business. There's a lot of parts of me, because we talked about this earlier, like I'm, people are complex, right? There's not every single part of me are, is not public facing. There's some parts that's just for my family. There's some parts that's just for me. So I'm not bringing every single part of my, my personality into my brand, but I am bringing the parts that are most consistent because I can't hide some parts. Like I can't hide the fact that can we talk about um, politics on your, on your podcast? Yes, we can talk about okay, that. Okay, so I'm not going to talk about like how I really feel about this president. I can't hide that, right? It's going to come up at some point. So I met, so I included that in my, my brand because, child, I had enough, right? So it's going to come out in some way. I cannot necessarily hide the fact that I am an advocate for Black women. Like, that's going to come out at some point, right? But there's some other parts of my business, like my spirituality. I keep out because that's, that's not something I want to publicly share. That's just for me and for, for my career. You know what I mean? So um, you have to figure out who you are. Then you have to figure out what parts you want to share. Because baby, when you start to share, you get feedback. So you got to be real strong and real right. strong and where you stand, right? And that's why some of the questions I ask are like, what do you believe in, right? What do you hate to see in the world, right? Those questions aren't just for shits and giggles. Like I really want to know who you are, who you are at your core. I can right. handle it. Yeah, with me. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. I want to add to that because here's the thing. A lot of times I am finding that when uh, creative entrepreneurs are working with copywriters, they are expecting the copywriters to just do the work. Like you tell me who I am and what I'm supposed to do and how to write it, but it don't work like that. It's, no. not, the, it's not the copywriter's job to tell you about you. Like you have to come to the copywriter and say, here's all of my stuff. And if you can't do the work to find out all your stuff, you can't expect the copywriter to help you figure that out. Hey, babe. Thank come you on. for saying that. Because I look cute today. I might record a video on that. Okay. So, so it is really like, it's my job to ask the questions. And I have a series of questions to really figure out who you are. But if you give me like half-assed answers, if you don't have the answers, then what I'm going to give you is a very generic, dry, boring copy. Because I can say like, hey, I'm having a sale today. That's copy, right? But if I say it in my voice, it would be probably like, hey, you don't want to miss this, y'all. And if I say it in your voice, it's like, you know, you need this period. You know what I'm saying? Like we are two different. And if you give me nothing, I'm going to give you, okay, we're having a sale today. Like, and so it's no, there's no personality. Your voice doesn't matter. Who will it resonate with? I don't know. Right? <laughs> like, right. It's not for you to figure that out. And I mean, the other, the other side to that coin is even uh, when you are going to get a website, right? Mm -hmm. They, people expect the graphic designer to write the copy and it don't work like that. It work like that. Okay, listen, copywriting is an art and it's a science, right? The art part is like the natural writer in me, right? I can find some words. I can find synonyms and adjectives and sentence structure. This is really like, wow, you did that, right? That's the art of it, right? But you are a part of that art too, right? So like I craft a story around your story, around your voice, around how you speak. And if you don't give me any of that, you only get science. And the science is there's a headline, right? There's a sub headline. There's a button. There, we're going to touch on their pain points, but it's going to be boring. Like, your neck hurts. Your back hurts. Here's some bomb. Like, and that's all you get because I had nothing else to give. So it is very much a collaborative um, experience. And you have to really be prepared to do the work. Like, you can speak to, Natasha, you can speak to how many questions I asked you. <laughs> like, and how many times I asked you. 
Read this in your voice. Let me hear you say it because it really matters how you would say it. And, and it really matters who your person is. And it, it, it's a lot. But yeah. you are the secret sauce in any copy that I write. So you have to know who you are. And I can't, I can't tell you. Right, exactly. And if you don't know what your brand purpose is and your vision and your mission and your values and your unique selling proposition and your ideal client avatar, you won't have to pause until you figure that out because that is the brand foundation. That's what I teach my coaching clients on. Like, if you don't have that brand foundation, baby, listen. Mm -hmm. And those are questions on my questionnaire. Do you have a vision? Do you have a mission? Do you have a business? Do you have a marketing plan? Do you have anything? Because that just shows me how invested you are into your business, right? And that shows me how much market research you've done on your own, right? And if you don't have any of those things, chances are you'll get denied. And yeah. that's, that's not just to spare my, I reclaim my time all the time. So I don't want to work with people who are not ready, but it's also a part of my integrity. Like girl, I could easily take your money and give you something real stale and real boring, but that doesn't feel good to me. And right. if you're not ready, you're not ready. I'll give you reasons why, but like sis get, or fellas, whoever's out there, like just get it really hone in on those brand foundations and make sure you have it before you start to outsource, whether it's me, a copywriter, whether it's a web designer, whether it's a market strategist, like, you have to have your foundation or get a coach or enroll in a course to get those together before you outsource anything else. Right. You that listen, you can hire me because I'm a branding strategist hey. and I can help you get that all the way together. Hey. You, cannot, you cannot move forward. You feel me? Shameless plug, but not shameless. You feel me? <laughs> so you can't move forward. I'm not telling you what you can and can't do. You can move forward, but not the way that you want to move if you do not have clarity around what your brand's purpose is, what, like, who, who's your ideal client? If you don't know that, certainly a website is not going to determine that for you. Throwing up a website, creating a logo, building a visual identity, getting copy, all of those don't determine who your client is. You're just throwing it up. and hope, It's like sp throwing spaghetti at the wall, hoping it sticks. Oh, and it probably won't. <laughs> like, that's the truth. And can I, like, piggyback off of that? Of course. Um... I really, really, really want to reiterate what Natasha just said because, y'all, I don't know how many times I ask, like, who's our audience, everybody. I get, often I get, like, Black women because I particularly work with Black women, so a lot of Black women are targeting other Black women, right? But it's just like, y'all, I'm a Black woman. My little sister's a Black woman. My mama is a Black woman. The way you talk to my mom will not be the same way you talk to me well, would not be the same way you talk to my little sister. Like, I had to look up with no cat meat. Like, girl, don't use that in your language if you want to talk to 33-year-olds, okay? Like, right. what are you talking about? Like, we still use often and don't. That's our slang, right? So this new stuff, I don't know what we're talking about. So you have to even understand stuff like that, right? You have to understand, like, my, like someone older may want a little more corporate because they this entrepreneur thing is new to them, okay? They may not be really interested in all this pros they just want they may just want straight to the point right for me i want to be a little seduced like give me tell me you'll make my dreams come true like you know i can give a little more fluff and the kids their attention spans is a little shorter so the copy can be a little more concise you know what i mean like they're they may be a little more impulsive buyers right so yeah. we might want to do headline 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 button versus like so much copy so it you can't just say like a race and a gender that's not enough information I need age. I need this, how much money they got this blow. I need to know if they're going to ask their husband on this. They're going to sleep. They're going to sleep on it. Are they impulsive? Okay. Do they need uh, six or seven payment plans? Are they like, do they have it to do one lump sum? Are they super spiritual or religious? Will they be turned off our curse words? Like, what's up? I need to really know more than black women, men, men who work out. Like, give me more. Like, you have to know them intimately. Like, and you also want to know this stuff because even though you may just be starting out in your journey, I'm treating your business like you about to be a corporation in seven to 10 years, okay? So when you start to do brand alignments, when you start to think of commercial placements, when you start to think of brand partnerships, you want to make sure those partnerships are aligned. You want to make sure your, your commercials are on the right channels. Like there's a difference between OWN and VH1, right? Like... I mean, there, there's a there's crossover, but they're different, right? So who are we really targeting? So it's more about your growth. I'm not just asking these questions just to annoy you. I, I really 
and doing this for your greater good and for your for your brand's longevity. And right. So it's the long game, not just the one two year game. Right. Exactly. And quite frankly, if you don't know who that person is, then how could you position yourself to be seen by them? Like, how can they find you if you don't know who they are? How can you talk to them in a way that resonates with them? How can I, as a branded photographer, create images that would attract that ideal audience? Like, there's so many layers to this. And it is really important for us to know and drill down into who our ideal client is because it will help us to create an irresistible brand, have a banging website, have dope copy, and help us to attract the type of clients that our dream clients that we want to work with. So it's really important that we do the work before we come to a copywriter to mm -hmm. help them help us to communicate what we're trying to say mm -hmm. to our dream client. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I think a lot of us, well, I, when I say us, I'm speaking to like the early 30 year old black female entrepreneur, right? And we spend a lot of time on Instagram. Like that's where I spend a lot of my time, right? But if your clients, are not on Instagram, where are you wasting your time? You know, so you really need to know, are they LinkedIn people? Are they TikTok people? Are they Facebook people? Are they billboard people? Like, what are we, are they strictly email people? But that also determines the medium in which I write and how I'm writing for you. And I can give you some emails and if people ain't checking their emails, then it's not my fault you didn't do necessarily market research, you know? Right, exactly. Um, mm -hmm. Just research. Do your research, y'all. <laughs> Get to know your person. What are some key takeaways that we can take away for, you know, developing our signature voice so we can stop stealing from our faves? Okay. One, stop stealing. Just stop. Just abandon it. Throw away that, that Google Doc drive you had with links to everybody's sales pages and their Instagram captions because I know you're doing it because I've done it too. So one, just stop. Just commit to, steal, to stop stealing. One. Two, I want you to answer maybe these three questions. What do I believe in? What do I hate to see in the world? And who do I admire and why? Just like answer those questions and develop some core values around those, right? I do, I'm going to share with you, I have like an evergreen webinar. Sure. I want people to share. So you can definitely take a look at that where I walk you through this process and it makes a lot of sense when you walk through it. But just like start to develop, if you don't have core values, write some core values down, right? And if you do have core values, write out some adjectives that describes a person who embodies that value. So one of my core values is to skip excuses, right? Yeah. So somebody who embodies skipping excuses, I would say they're reliable, they're dependable. That's all I have for now, top of my head, right? right. Write out those adjectives. And if you see a trend in your core values and the adjectives that describe those core values, you can choose three to five to use to, to say your brand voice, like my brand voice is reliable. My brand voice is fun. My brand voice is consistent, right? And use that and always look at your core value. I mean, your brand voice and run every email, every caption to see if it checks that box, right? So if I'm writing and I'm just like, is this, is this inclusive? Is it bold? It's not. Let me, let me try this again. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes we'll write and we're without intention. Everything is just, do everything with intention. I mean, how else can you develop your voice? Oh, ask your people. Ask your people how they like to be talked to. Ask them, do they like slang? Do they like cursing? Do they like long emails? Do they like just emails straight to the point? Do they like emails with pictures in it? Call up two or three of your ideal clients or people that you would love to work with, even if you haven't, and just ask them a series of questions. And maybe I'll share some questions, like a cheat sheet for them to get to. Maybe I need to do it as a freebie. I don't know, but we'll work that out. But like ask them some questions about how they like, if we were in a personal fitness or we were doing like a boot camp, like, do you need somebody to say, you can do it? Or do you need somebody like, listen, sis, you kind of chubby, get it together. Like <laughs> ask them how they are motivated, what drives them to, to get something done and use that information too. So combine who you are with how your people like to be spoken to and how they're motivated. And, and craft a voice around that. No, I love that. And the reason why I asked that is because I know when you were helping me to develop what my signature voice was, I struggled with being too corporate because I work a nine to five. And so I was used to having to put on and talk a certain way. 
uh-huh. at work. And then when I talked to my clients, it was a different way. But then I wanted to just be me. Uh-huh. Um, and so developing my signature voice, it really helped me to really own my voice and who I am and to bring that into my brand and to really say, you know what, like, you know, my brand voice, part of it is tough love, but also encouragement, mm-hmm. um, motivation, like all of those things. Um, because I believe that, you know, we have to stop, like you said, we have to skip, we have to skip the excuses and do the work. Mm-hmm. Right. But you need somebody that's going to say, Hey, boo boo, get it together. No more. We're not, we're not doing this pity party stuff no more. We're not talking right. about the same issues. I keep giving you advice. And you're still not taking the advice that I'm giving you to help you get out of where you are. And you know what you're doing is not working. That's the biggest thing. Like, you know, like the numbers don't lie. Okay. Your experiences that you have with these clients don't lie. Like if you're working with people that you hate, if you're begging people to work with you, if your clients are just not aligned, you know, like, I don't even need to tell you. Right. So what are you going to do? Now that you know better, you know, like at some point you have to be accountable. And this is not to shame you. This is not to anything. It's to tell you that there are tools out there. There are people out there to help you to have a business that really works for you. And it's kind of like seen. But like when I work with Natasha, y'all, I was just like, yes, Lord. Yeah. Okay. Listen, we ain't negotiating these prices. Okay. She paid me in full. Okay. But she came, she came to do the work. And I was like, see, this is this is what it should be. This is what it always should be, right? So I'm energized. I'm hyped. I'm happy. I'm pleased. Now we have a relationship. So it's like you can also work with these type of people when you are super clear about your brand foundation and when you're super clear about who you are. Like I'm pretty sure when you work with me, you weren't surprised about how I showed up, how I spoke to you, how we got straight to work. Like, all right, hey, nice to see you. Let's work. But like you know, like that wasn't a surprise because that's who I show up as all the time. Right, exactly. Like, be the same person you want are online and offline. Mm-hmm. And the only way you do that is just by being real. <laughs> like, you have to just take off the mask because at some point it's going to be exposed anyway. Just take it off and be so. Right, exactly. I'm like, oh, she showed up in a graphic tee and sweats. I was like, that's my job. <laughs> Let me wear my graphic tee and sweats too because I didn't want to be on, you know, put on regular clothes. Like, right. let's come do this work. A bow lip and a white, you know, V-neck. That's my girl. Right. Um, and it's just really just owning who you are and showing up, doing more of that. Right. Mm-hmm. Because that's when you start to attract the type of people you want to work with more authentically. This is how you become an irresistible brand and, and a brand that attracts people who want to work with you just simply off of your personality, off of your signature brand voice, because they can relate because you're not selling from your faves. You're not sounding cookie cutter like everybody else. And you have something of value to offer and communicating that in a way that resonates with your audience. Cookie cutter is like the key keyword. Like I feel like so many people out here, we got the same brand pictures, okay? We got the same Friday introductions. We got the same energy. Like it's just the same, more of the same. And that's okay. Like there are there are similarities amongst similar people, right? But like I really need you people to embrace their quirkiness. And I think more so when I when I work with people, it's more of a mindset thing. Like you just have to accept that you're you, accept that there's absolutely nothing wrong with you, and show up unapologetically in that space. Like y'all look at Issa Rae. Like she is a little awkward black girl. She's a little funny. Like you know what I'm saying. Like she is uh, unauthentically her. But a lot of people wouldn't have showed up as awkward black girls too if she didn't say okay it's cool it's whatever like I rap in the mirror sometimes like that's just who I am and like the minute that you are you there's going to be people like me too like you know what I'm saying just be bold enough brave enough and secure enough to do exactly Mm -hmm. exactly oh I love this conversation so (laughs) so juicy tell us how we can stay connected to you after the show you guys can find me at every single platform. My name is Rita Olds, R-I-T-A-O-L-D-S. I'm most active on Instagram and my email list. So come, oh, I have a really dope quiz that I want y'all to take. Okay, so put that in the comments somewhere to start. Okay, I will. Because I do have a really cool uh, quiz about your brand personality, and it's going to help you develop some of your core values, yes. mission and your vision, and ways to show up and sell offensively once you figure out your brand personality. So go ahead and take that quiz. 
get on the list. You'll get some tips from me on how to just show up, how to be your best self, how to sell authentically, how to do more market research. So yeah, that's where you can find me everywhere. Rita, RitaOlds.com and at RitaOlds on all platforms. Yes, I love it. Definitely take the quiz. That is what led me to hiring Rita for my copy because I took the quiz and I was like, yes, yes, and yes, I need to work with her. <laughs> Amen. Um, so the brand quiz is amazing. So I'm make sure that I link to it. I'm going to compile all of the resources and have like a podcast resource guide to give to people at the end of that season. So I'll make sure we include all those things um, that we mentioned so you guys can have that. So you can start to think about what your unique and your signature brand voice is and how to develop that. And so Rita is a great resource. And I hope that you guys really take this quiz because it's phenomenal. So any other tips you want to leave us with before we wrap up? I just really want to drive home that you're great. You're perfect the way you are. The world needs more of whoever you are. Let's stop all the cookie cutter. We are not the same. And the minute you show up, you will find the people who love you for just who you are. Thank you for listening to the Purpose to Create podcast. Share, like, comment, or review this episode. Check out the show notes at www.purposetocreatepodcast.com and connect with us online at Purpose to Create.